to look at the latest developments in the pandemic. I'm joined now by uh, Lisa Barrett. Dr. Lisa Barrett is joining us from Halifax. Dr. Barrett is a clinician and an infectious disease specialist with the, the Department of Medicine at Dalhousie University. Dr. Barrett, thanks for taking the time. Good afternoon. You have watched uh, today's briefing, the, the latest uh, modeling and the scenarios that were uh, presented. Uh, how do you react to the scenario if the Omicron variant becomes established in Canada? It's a fairly dramatic scenario. It is a dramatic scenario, and both the number of cases and potentially the impact on our health system is quite marked. I think it really does highlight couple of things. I, I think they did highlight the fact that there is some uncertainty about exactly how infective or transmittable the Omicron is, but we do have to consider the worst case scenario that it is more transmittable. And then we look to what that means for our health system. Right now, specifically related to Omicron, uh, it does look like the symptoms can be somewhat milder, which may go okay However, the problem is if we get a large number of cases, even if the percentage of people that end up in hospital is lower, we may have difficulties, especially when we have some uncertainty about the match with vaccine at the moment prior to boosters. Well, that's interesting because the last time we spoke was two weeks ago and it was the very day that they announced or, you know, that we became aware of the Omicron variant. Uh, what more do we know now as we speak? Uh, you mentioned uh, it, it appears to be producing uh, less serious symptoms, that appears to be. Uh, what about transmissibility? And you mentioned vaccines. Well, the three things we always look at, transmissibility, severity of disease, and what is the match with a vaccine in terms of protection from the very bad things. Right now, we know that uh, it appears in South Africa that the symptoms in folks who were infected is somewhat less, but we don't necessarily know that that is something that we can extrapolate to all other countries and all other settings, mainly because we have different amounts of Delta and we have different amounts of vaccination. So although we're not certain, we're going to take the prudence principle there and say maybe slightly milder, but let's not hang our hat on it. And then with transmittability, there is some data coming out that suggests that it may be more transmittable. Again, it's a maybe, um, but again, can't ignore that fact because that's the danger part here. And then vaccination, we're still in the process of learning more. Some companies have come forward with a suggestion that an additional dose of vaccine may be helpful in increasing protection. But again, uh, those data I have not seen. It's by press release and certainly um, I think it would be hard to say anything about that in the real world yet. The, the WHO warned against uh, quick conclusions about vaccine efficacy, saying that the, those studies had only looked at the, I believe it was the antibody response, and it was only a partial study of the immune system. So it was, it was too early to conclude anything. Absolutely, uh, very much so. And and everything I'm saying today is is slightly further ahead than it was a couple of weeks ago when this first uh, came to our attention, but we really don't have enough information to start making broad, sweeping policy decisions like boosters for everyone in case Omicron comes by. Uh, that would be premature, and right now I think people should definitely feel good about protection from their vaccines as they stand for Delta, um, always keeping in mind as we go into the holidays that we need to think about layers of protection, not just one tool, but using all the tools at our disposal, including good public health measures, vaccination, and testing where it's available. Okay, I wanna ask you um, about controlling the spread. Um, 10 days after Canada announced that we would be doing airport testing of international travelers from everywhere but the United States, that we would be tested at the airport, Health Minister uh, Jean-Yves Duclos today said that we're only up to half capacity of that testing, and he can't say when we'll be up to full capacity. Should we be concerned if we're concerned about the spread of, uh, of the variant to Canada? One of our best defenses in a viral pandemic is to know where the virus is and what it is. That becomes more difficult if we don't have our testing in place. Um, it, that does concern me. It doesn't panic me because we should still all be doing the things we need to do and assume that there is virus around us. Um, so does it panic me? No. Do I think it's good 
not really. And are there other strategies we should be taking while that testing is being ramped up further to help mitigate the risk? And by that, I mean other forms mm -hmm. of testing, for example, rapid testing being available to people on a voluntary basis would be a great stop um, stop measure while they're fully ramping up. Okay, another question then, should we be assuming that there's a degree of community spread? Because we have seen some cases of the Omicron uh, identified that aren't even associated with any travel. So should we assume that in some places in Canada, it's here and already community spreading? You know, I, I really don't spend a lot of time dividing my head between COVID Omicron and COVID non-Omicron at the moment. Although I really want to know more about this and where it is, I presume areas that have cases may and places that do have documented community spread have it. And therefore, the approach at a public health and personal level should be the same. We should be taking doing our risk assessment and making sure that we're taking precautions recommended in our local areas by public health. And if we do that, then we do have some ability to control because we know Omicron is likely to be controlled by those basic core public health measures. So. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that folks assume when there are cases in their area, they need to stick with the public health measures, even though it's tiresome over the holidays, we need to do that, Omicron or not. Okay, in the same vein, then, if we just look at COVID, and we won't make the distinction between the new variants and the old and the medium old, breakthrough, they used to be called breakthrough infections, but we're hearing about rising rates of infection among those who are fully vaccinated. Uh, this past week in Ontario, the figure was almost around 40% of people who had been vaccinated and were infected. So what should we make of the trend? Yeah, I think completely expected. When you've vaccinated almost everyone, of course, the percentage of cases that show up in the almost everyone are going to be higher. And so I don't think that that is um, unexpected and most of those cases are milder, even in people who were at risk, than we would have expected in unvaccinated people, which does tell us vaccines are still doing what they're meant to do. I do think, though, we have to be mindful of how many cases we're permissive of in our communities, because even if it's a far less risk of being hospitalized, if you're vaccinated, if that percentage, that absolute number gets too high because our cases are so high, then we're again going to still have a problem in our hospitals and we won't be able to keep up. So we do need to keep an eye on the total case number still while recognizing that vaccines are still our best tool here. Breakthrough cases, not as severe, but we still have to keep the number at a reasonable level or we will start to fill our hospitals. All right, Dr. Barrett, thank you very much. A pleasure as always. Thank you.